It's a little bit windy today, so hopefully you all won't mind the rustling in the background. But we are back with episode two of Voice Memos from Katrina. And in case you're new here or haven't watched episode one, I'm starting a new series where I just pull out the Voice Memos app while I'm walking and share whatever's on my mind at the moment. It's meant to be unrefined and unscripted, so it may not be the most eloquent, but I hope you all enjoy and I would love to hear any thoughts you have. This one, I wanted to talk about relationships because I feel like in my 20s and in the recent years, relationships have been on my mind a lot, whether it's friendships, romantic relationships, family relationships. I feel like there have been things that have changed and I've been and still am navigating all of that. And <laughs> the Instagram algorithm knows because it keeps serving me all these videos right now of like people talking through, oh, I love adult friendships because, or, oh, don't you realize when you're in your 20s, like friendships are like X, Y, Z. And it gives me some time to think about like, okay, how do I actually feel about this video? Do I agree? Do I disagree? Like, how is my experience compared to theirs? Because I don't think anything is ever like one size fits all. Friendships, if you haven't watched my one video all about friendships, it's an area that I've been insecure about since I was a little girl. And growing up, I just never felt like a solid core friendship group or anything like that. Um, and I don't think it was until my mid-20s where I feel like I could confidently say that I felt more secure in my friendships. When I think of all my strong friendships now, there were seasons in our friendships that were harder, were more distant. And I think that's normal, but I do appreciate and I think that more and more now, like there's nobody I talk to on a daily basis besides Ryan, right? There's no one I talk to on a daily basis besides my romantic partner. And that doesn't lead me to feel like I'm not close to these people anymore or that I don't mean something to them. But something that I've noticed is with any like friend group, when you get a bunch of people together, there's like a lot of different people, different personalities, there's bound to be feelings like hurt along the way, whether people share it or not. I feel like a lot of times people think that, oh, like friendship and friend groups, when there's drama, it's bad. But I feel like sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when there's quote unquote drama, it's because someone is actually speaking up about how they feel, which I think is kind of important part of a close friendship. Something that I'm trying to grapple with and I've been talking to my therapist about in like previous sessions was understanding that different people, especially as we grow older, even if we started off at the same spot, right? Or the same family or whatever, we can have different values as we grow older. And sometimes we can have the same value, but it can show up differently or what it means to us. It can be represented differently. And so I saw a We The Urban quote the other day that says, stop expecting people to be you. Or it was like, stop expecting you from other people. And that's a really tough pill for me to swallow and something I'm still trying to navigate. So it's not something that I already have all figured out, but I do think it is true and it would help me a lot because I feel like expectations are really something that have been kind of like my kryptonite sometimes is that I have expectations of how I think people should be if we're this close um, and they end up not meeting that expectation and I'm not saying that you know if they don't just like to take it all because oh we're all different people because I do think that it's important to find people aligned with us but I also think that a downfall of social media and the same rhetoric that I'm hearing from all these people talking about adult friendships is that they're always so quick to cut people out of their life or at least to say it like, oh, protect your peace. And if blah, 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 just cut them out of your life. Like you deserve better, protect your peace. That's not always the case. I don't feel like just cutting out people protects my peace all the time. All or nothing mentalities are never so good. I don't think it just ends with you not having someone in your life anymore and then all of a sudden you feel peaceful. And maybe it's because I haven't reached that nirvana, like higher version of myself. But I feel like that kind of language lends itself to people feeling like they can't feel or share or surface the negative feelings that come with relationships. 
you can cut someone out of your life and still feel negatively about it. You can cut someone out of your life and still feel grief, right? You can say something to somebody that's you speaking up for yourself, you advocating for yourself and still be navigating the repercussions and like the hurt that comes from it. Everything is such like a two-way street and there's reactions and responses to our actions. And that's something that's been really hard for me to navigate. I have reacted based on that kind of messaging, right? Of like, I deserve better. I deserve better. And so you should do this or if not, like, then we're done. But what if they're not able to give you that and you don't want to cut them out of your life completely? I saw this other Instagram reel talking about this like minivan theory and I wasn't in love with it, but I do kind of understand the concept of you have a huge minivan of the people in your life, right? Your circle. And you can choose who's like in your van and also what seat they take. So maybe that person who doesn't align with you on every single thing, but they're still a homie, right? You still love them, care about them, want them in your life. Maybe they're not sitting in the front seat. Maybe they're not the person you're hanging out with every day, but you're not trying to cut them out of your life. I don't really know where I'm going with this, but I just feel like relationships are so nuanced and whenever people as with anything try to put a blanket statement for how we should feel or how we should act it can just lead to some trouble but it's important for us to like sift through the information that we get whether it's from like online sources or people in our lives and kind of really think about like how do we feel in my teenage years and early 20s and mid 20s i feel like i was so highly influenced by what the people around me thought to the point where i would convince myself that my feelings were the way that they felt like i should feel and it wasn't until maybe the last two years where i started to realize like hey i don't actually agree with all the things that they think our values are different and my feelings are different And they might not approve of it all, but that is how I feel. And I shouldn't always try to seek their approval or act or believe or feel in a way that they would feel. Because a lot of times I feel like people are projecting what they would want for themselves, which is normal. I do that all the time, which is so funny because when I was in college learning about psychology and the different defense mechanisms... I learned about projection. I remember taking notes about it. And I was like, people are really out there telling other people that they feel the way that they themselves actually feel. I was like, that's so strange. But then I realized, well, shit, (laughs) projection is actually so common. So, so common. And um, I feel like we all do it. And I think... I think when I realized that the advice that I was getting from people was often just a projection of, you know, their own thoughts and what they would want in their own friendship or relationship made me realize that I need to really sit down and think about what do I actually feel? What do I actually think? And sometimes it's hard. It's so hard when you've grown up, or at least for me, and we're always subconsciously seeking the approval of the people around you. Like I found this paper that I wrote in college where there was an activity, they made us write down our biggest fears. And one of mine was like disappointing my sister, my parents, the people around me, and just being a failure. And I thought it was so interesting that like disappointing them was something so scary for me to the point where I was actually like suppressing and unknowingly suppressing my own thoughts and feelings to try to gain their approval, right? Because I didn't want to disappoint them. But sometimes in that process, I was kind of like losing myself and not even losing myself because I never even knew what I thought myself without the influence of others because I always ran to them. And I will say like, it was on me too because I would go to them for advice. I always felt like I couldn't figure anything out on my own. I always had to process it out loud with others and figure it outside with others to figure out how I was feeling. But something that I feel has changed in how I've grown in these past couple of years is that I'm beginning to realize that my own thoughts and feelings 
are different from those around me, even from Ryan. There are stuff that we talk about and we have different conclusions of how we feel about a situation and that's okay. And I think that a lot of times when, you know, you are trying to filter out the people in your life or if you're listening to those therapists online and those people that are just saying like, oh, cut out the people in your life that blah, blah, blah. It will lead you to having just an echo chamber where everybody just thinks the same as you. And sometimes it's really hard to even decipher of like, what do you actually think yourself? How do you actually feel? And that's been something that I've been trying to navigate and it's been hard. It's been difficult. And I think that that realization and that growth also kind of fractured some of my relationships too. And that's a hard part to swallow. Like I feel like my relationship with my sister has changed a lot in the past couple of years. As we get older, I realize that our values and our outlook on life and just our personalities are so different. And I think that we had such a turbulent last year because I wanted us to be the same. And we had a talk last year too, where we kind of talked through and we did have very different expectations and different understandings of certain things, but we both agree like we really love each other. We care about each other, but a lot of the things in our old relationship and the way we were doing things was kind of toxic for the both of us, but we're also not trying to like have no relationship. I think that a lot of times those Instagram therapists feed that information like, oh, With your family, like if they're bad for your mental health, cut them off. Like cut them off. You don't need to have relationships with your family. Just cut their family. And I get that. I get that. And I respect the people who feel like that is the best decision for them. For me and myself, and I know, like I'm not trying to have no relationship with anyone in my immediate family, right? Even though there have been times where I've gotten so mad at my parents where I'm like, I'm never going to talk to them again. But when I step back and think about what I value in life and what really matters, like my family matters to me and I I want to repair that. And I feel like relationships could be harmed, but they can also be repaired. And that process might be difficult and might be long and stuff. But I feel like if both parties are, are down for it and willing to do it, then you can kind of take baby steps. But that's also been the difficult part with a lot of relationships, friendships too. It's just, it's not always easy to find that both parties are willing to do it. Something that I've learned is that some people are just not the kind of people that will take that initiative. And so sometimes when I catch myself thinking like, oh, how come I'm always the one has to start it off? Or how come I'm always the one has to reach out? Or I'm always the one has to be vulnerable first. Like I can share that with people, but I don't know, some people, they're just, that's just not something they're going to do. And I think it's up to you and them and whatever you want to figure out with your relationships, which ones are you willing to work on and accept the differences? And it doesn't have to be a one size fits all rule. I think that there's just some people in my life that I will always have a soft spot for versus other people, like maybe not. And I think that's okay. I feel like we have to write our own rules for our own relationships and understand that it's okay if other people in our lives don't feel the same way. And it's hard and I'm still going through that journey right now. And so I'm not saying this as any kind of like therapist or coach or whatever. If you're going through anything similar, just know I'm with you too. (laughs) See you later.